Lockdown football. It was probably one of the most strange periods of footballing history, as the campaign was paused halfway through because of a global pandemic, and all the leagues would end up resuming to play in empty stadiums for what felt like a meaningless and empty league title. Because what was football without the fans? But with this came the rise of a handful of players who seemed to benefit from the unusual circumstances that they were playing in. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the five players I thought had the best lockdown football campaign. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off in Serie A, we have a man that not many know of today. But four years ago, he was a beast, that of Ciro Immobile. Before the 2019-20 season, Immobile was one of the world's more average strikers. But he really started to make his name when he left Torino for Lazio in 2016. And in his debut season for Lazio, he scored 26 goals in all competitions, which really put him on the map considering he only scored 5 goals the season prior. And in his next season, 27-18, he scored a whopping 43 goals in all competitions. So going into the 2019-20 season, he was a feared opponent. And believe it or not, Lazio were big contenders for top 4. At 30 years old, Immobile started the 2019-20 season off on a bang. He came out the gates running, and had quickly put himself first in the race for the Capo Canari. Immobile had made it really clear that he was going to be one of Serie A's best strikers in its history. And it was only a matter of time until he would get that far. By March 1st, which is the day I'm going to use to separate pre-lockdown to lockdown stats, he had scored a total of 27 goals in just Serie A, way ahead of any competition contending for the scoring title that season. And that was when lockdown hit. After four months of quarantine, the leagues would finally resume in the bubble for the last 11 matches of the 2019-20 season. Serie Mobile would absolutely turn up. This guy was easily one of the best in-class strikers in the world during this 10-week period. I don't think I've seen such consistent goal scoring and pinpoint accuracy from a striker since. This guy was just a different breed. By the time the season was over, Ciro Immobile had scored a total of 9 goals and 1 assist in the 11 games he played, which was just crazy. And better yet, he'd become Lazio's all-time top scorer for the club, and joined the echelon of about 8 players to score more than 35 goals in a single season. The guy was just insane. But after the lockdown season, things just weren't the best for Immobile. He didn't start losing his form immediately after that year, but slowly and surely his age was catching up to him, and he just started to lose his touch as every footballer would throughout the latter years of their career. In the 2022-23 season, he had his worst one yet, scoring a total of 14 goals a year for Lazio, which isn't even that bad, but he started to get less and less appearances. And he's kind of struggling to keep up with this new young generation of footballers. But he has helped Lazio get pretty good these past couple of years, consistently keeping them in contention for top four. And he has won a multitude of individual awards on top of that. To this day, he's still playing with Lazio, and at 34 years old, he's still in pretty decent form with 10 goals a season. But compared to four years ago, there's been a big decline. But now, let's look at one of the most timeless players in football history. Kevin De Bruyne easily gets the title as one of the best midfielders in the history of football, but he wasn't always the best in the world. And in lockdown, he definitely made himself worth that title, but more on that later. Before the season, Pep had already turned him into a world-class midfielder, him being a consistent starter and instrumental in the Man City team for about the last four years. As in total, he had scored an incredible 41 goals and 68 assists. Like, what is seriously wrong with someone to be putting up those kinds of numbers? And consistently, too. The best part, though, is that Kevin De Bruyne turned up the heat even more for 2019-20. Numbers-wise, he started the season off on a bang, assisting a total of 9 goals and scoring to himself, which was just the beginning of the campaign for him. From here, he only started to cook up even more, being absolute key to the success of Man City that season, easily one of the top performers in all of the Premier League. And words can't explain the beauty of his play, so I'll let you see for yourself. By March 1st, he had a total of 16 assists and 8 goals to his name, a few of which were absolute screamers. And when the lockdown season started, for some odd reason, he became one of the craziest goal scorers in the league. His first game back against Arsenal was pretty close to a 10 out of 10 performance. He scored this calm little penalty and then just dominated the match. Moving forward, Kevin De Bruyne just could not stop scoring. His performance of the season easily came against Liverpool where City dismantled them 4-0 with De Bruyne scoring and assisting. It was from this performance that De Bruyne was starting to be looked at as one of the greatest midfielders in the league. He ended the season with a total of 16 goals and 23 assists in all competitions, having the most combined goals and assists in the league that year, which is just absolutely insane. And fast forward to the current day, he's become one of the best players in the world, helping Man City to win the Champions League and the Premier League several times, along with a handful of domestic cups. And he is still putting up the same man of the match performances as he was two years ago. The man is just absolutely insane. But I must say, the story of the next player I'm covering isn't as beautiful. Timo Werner is a bit of a strange player. I play a lot of uh, Fortnite. Once one of the most prolific goal scorers in the Bundesliga, to the biggest transfer flop at Chelsea. Safe to say his career has been a roller coaster. Before lockdown, though, Timo Werner was setting the Bundesliga on fire. 
Previously, he had been super successful at Stuttgart, and when he moved to RB Leipzig, he only got better. His first season at Leipzig was a major success, scoring 21 goals in all competitions, and becoming one of the most valuable German talents in world football. Being only 22 years old, and having three really consistent seasons of 20 plus goals, he really had the world at his feet. His play style of being extremely direct and energetic is what got him his nickname of Turbo Timo. He was one of the fastest players in the Bundesliga while he was playing there, and with the 2019-20 season ahead of him, no one really expected him to do so well. He started off the campaign in some pretty decent form, scoring 5 goals in the first 5 matches, but what he was doing on the pitch was unparalleled to anyone else playing in the Bundesliga at the time. He was arguably Leipzig's most important player in many of their wins, and generally throughout the season, Turbo Timo was just on another level. From match day 10 to 16, keep in mind it's only a 6 game stretch, Timo Werner would score a total of 12 goals and was the main reason Leipzig were able to be the likes of Hoffenheim, Cologne, and Mainz 05. It was just insane to see this guy demolish teams like that, and even in the Champions League, he was just as good. Like when he scored 3 against Benfica, and scored a goal in a 1-0 win against Spurs to knock him out. That was when football fans really noticed that Timo Werner guy was someone they should be worried about. By March 1st, he had massed a total of 21 goals in just the Bundesliga. He also had 4 goals in the Champions League too, but that doesn't matter that much. And when football came back in the summer, Timo Werner would get to work. He started the lockdown season with a hat-trick against Mainz 05. And even though he would only score like 7 goals in the 8 games he played, his performances where he didn't score were much more impactful, as Timo Werner was a key piece of the Leipzig attack, where he would assist the build-up and ultimately be a part of many crucial goals. By the end of the year, he had 34 goals and 13 assists and had beaten the club record for top score. Werner then went on to make a 70 million euro move to Chelsea, where he won the Champions League, but ultimately he wasn't very good whatsoever. And in 2023, he happened to make a return to RB Leipzig, and he did pretty well. And now in the current day, he's at Spurs on loan and has only scored two goals this season so far. And it's crystal clear that Timo Werner's career had had a bit of a downfall, but not as much as the next guy I'm going to talk about. Danny Ings is actually one of the more decent strikers in Prem history when he was in his prime, but now he has fallen under the radar a bit. So let's go back three or four years ahead of the 2019-20 season. Prior to joining Southampton where Ings would make his name, he was actually playing for Liverpool and his three year spell there was absolutely horrific making only 25 appearances in total for the Reds, mainly because of the form of Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, and Roberto Firmino at the time. He only ended up scoring 4 goals, and for the most part, that is embarrassing. But that led Southampton to purchase him on an absolute bargain of £18 million. And for the most part, in his first season, he was pretty good with Southampton, as he finally got his big chance to shine, scoring 8 goals in that season. You see, Danny Ings is one of the many super versatile strikers in the Prem. And known for his quick movements and agility, he also possesses a strong positional sense, often running in behind. Combining this skill set allows him to be extremely proficient in scoring goals and lets his technical ability shine, and he portrays an outwardly display of this in the 2019-20 season. His campaign didn't start off so well, only managing to put the ball in the back of the net a handful of times in the first few games. As the season went on, things did get better, and for some odd reason, Denny Ings was one of the top scorers in the league that year. By March 1st, he had a total of 15 goals and 1 assist, which wasn't too bad for him at all, but he would get to another level during lockdown. They create highlight reel after highlight reel <laughs> after highlight reel, and it's just phenomenal. He has shown that it's not just ability, it is hard work. Denny Ings was going off in the lockdown season, and generally this guy was just different. He helped Southampton draw some big teams like Man United, and he even helped Southampton beat Man City in one of the biggest shockers of the season. By the end of the 8 matches he played during lockdown, he scored a total of 7 goals and 1 assist, bringing his year total to 22 goals and 2 assists in the Premier League, which was 2nd in the Golden Boot race behind Jamie Vardy. From this season on however, the future did not look so good, as he started to score less and less, and in the 2020-21 season he would move to Aston Villa, and after an underwhelming 2 year spell there, he would get signed by West Ham in January of 2022, and to this day he's still playing there. Having scored just 1 goal in the 2023-24 season, it's safe to say that Danny Ings career is going to be coming to an end soon, but luckily the story ends a bit differently for the last player I'm going to cover. I recently just made a video on this guy, but Jaden Sancho was one of the toughest ballers in COVID lockdown. Before the 2019-20 season, Jaden Sancho had just been playing for Dortmund in the season before, and he hadn't really proved himself in the Bundesliga quite yet, having scored a total of 14 goals in the 3 seasons he was there for, but he was still looking like a super bright talent coming up in the German first tier. And when it came to the 2019-20 season, Jaden Sancho just popped off. He started the season off great with 3 goals and 5 assists in the first 5 matches, and that form continued. He was easily one of the best wingers in the world at the time before COVID, and he was just going absolutely crazy. 
By March 1st, he had accumulated a total of 14 goals and 16 assists. He has 30 goal contributions by match week 23. That is absolutely insane by any standard, and things for Jane Sancho only got even better during the lockdown matches, but not so much on the score sheet. You see, in the nine matches Jane Sancho played in the COVID season, he would only score three goals and assist one, but it was his overall contributions and the role he played in the team that was the highlight of his form during this term. And there isn't much more to say other than that he was just incredible. And as the next season came, he continued to outperform himself in the Bundesliga. And he ended up securing a move to Manchester United, which everyone knows did not go well at all. But in 2024, he has returned to Dortmund and it is going well for him so far. And that about wraps up this video. If you want to know more about how Jane Sancho is doing at Dortmund right now, I just made a video right here. I explained the whole rise, fall, and rise again of Jane Sancho. So if you're interested, you might want to watch it. Make sure you subscribe over here and I'll see you guys next week.